one of the last things I wanted to do internally was do a perform a grayscale setup on it. You get the line, like I said, by I can't get to go any closer, but pull off for grayscale adjustment, which is this right, right. Oh, come on, whoa, whoa. I'm looking at what I'm doing off the camera, it's out of focus. This right here on that tip. And let's see, you have your red, green, blue bias. And then what did I say? Blue and green bias, or drive, and the screen control right there. And it's never been adjusted. What it's doing is the blues are, blues are the, the whites look okay, a little bluish on the high end, like it made a really cool white. I don't like that. The problem is the lower end of the grayscale is greenish in tint. And it, while it did look good, it just some of the darker scenes appeared overly green. Last movie I watched on it was MASH. And you know how MASH is green to begin with. So it made it really green. So it's just a little tweak, you know. Come on, it's 32 years old. Never been worked on. It's a simple fix. It has an interlocked power cord and I can't get it off. I don't want to mess it up. I'm trying to get it off. So I just, I'm going to use my isolation transformer. And I just have a jumper to the power supply. So I'm going to turn this beast on. There's the tinging I was talking about. We are live. There's the white line. Camera's making it look a little bluish, but I got a perfect grayscale now. That was easy. TV looks great. Focus didn't have to touch. It's razor sharp all around to see all the scan lines. See, so yeah, I just a little tweaking on the bias, and I the screen control is right where it needed to be actually, using the setup line. Everything else just need a little tweaking, and it's perfect now. Well, now to finish putting it up back together and polish up the cabinet some. Well, several hours later of thorough cleaning, and this is where I am at. It was a success. I put my channel numbers back in order. The 1976 one, they did change the tab inserts, and it actually starts off on two, then four. I'll have to show that in a minute. Okay. Let's do a quick tour of this television. It is, it would say Sears Solid State right there. Sears always still labeled their stuff Solid State, even to the 80s. Even the 1983 Sanyo Sears, what did Sears call theirs? The Beta Vision VCR. It said Sears Solid State. I'll show that. I mean, you're not going to have tubes in a VCR. Or how about the Sears Telegames, the Atari clone? It, it said Solid State on it, too. Anyhow, everything's polished to a mirror-like finish. The wood grain looks shiny. Pull on volume. You have the light sensor, which adjusts the contrast according to the light. So yeah, it's just my finger covering it up. Uh, this older one has the every channel's direct access. So, and it, another thing, it's capacitance touch. You don't have to push anything. You just press it and change this channel. Right now, when I was setting it up, I got channels two and three as the same channel. But I put it back. Uh, Standard controls, color, tint, brightness, contrast, vertical hold, and one button color. There's all your Varactor diode tuning controls. Here is the simplified instructions. There we go. This, my parents' first console TV had this set up, except it had the orange uh, neon lamp, like this one. But it only had two buttons up and down to go through the channels. Well, this one gives you direct access to all 12 channels. 
top has been polished as well. Nice and slick. I got all the dirt out of the vents and cleaned up. The original rabbit ears I polished. It was only the part that was exposed that actually needed work because everything underneath was like brand new. But I polished it anyways. The original rabbit ears are complete and intact. I need to build a transmitter so I can actually utilize rabbit ears or UHF loop bow tie antenna whatever in the house. So that's what the rabbit ears would look like. any period uh, 1979 material that I made on tape or this, these are beta tapes I put on DVD for a friend a long time ago but yeah here's some classic 1985 commercials here behold the beer belly the old spare tire the La Banza. 50 million Americans need a shortcut to get from fat to flat and here it is. It's called the Gut Buster. It's the ultimate fitness machine, specifically designed to firm and flatten the stomach as nothing else can. Just watch this easy exercise or turn ordinary sit-ups into fat-burning, tummy-tightening power stretches. Each time you activate the resistance coil, is like training ugly flab or sexy sunfish muscle. Just slip into the stirrups, curl your fingers around the molded hand grip, and roll, roll, roll your way to a tremor you. And ladies, if you as serious as he is, that flat stomach you had in high school can be yours again. Minutes a day is all it takes. Basic spring-ups like these work the upper abdominal region. <laughs> Reverse for tension-assisted high-risers that exercise lower stomach Leg muscles. Wars. This light but sturdy unit weighs in at just 27 ounces and travels easily so you can exercise anywhere. Forget about gyms, expensive rowing machines, and exercises you don't need. If your stomach's the problem, Gut Buster's the answer. Copycat devices may look similar, but nothing fights the battle of the bulge like the original Gut Buster. And it's yours with a 30-day money-back guarantee of satisfaction. So, go ahead, Gut Busters. If you're serious, and you're serious about a flat stomach, just pick up the phone and exercise your right to call toll-free now. To order, call 1-800-222-3838. And even back in 1985, 1995. <laughs> Only for only 1995. Only 1995. For 1995 plus $3 shipping and handling to <laughs> the random. Gut Buster, Box 7019, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. That's the Gut Buster. Holy crap, no way. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. That's awesome. It's 1 800 222 3838. I forget what movie this was. What's that down there? What's that? Oh, that's you. Oh, that was the end of a tape right there. I remember that. 
commercial for full match coverage again from HBO, 5 to 7:30 p.m. Okay. with highlights at 7:30 and 11:30 Eastern now, time. Apparently. And for the first four days, Let's see what's on this tape. And Cesar Romero and dozens oh, of celebrities Christmas. in the 12th annual Circus of the Stars. Stay tuned. Actually, that doesn't make sense because this was this tape's from 1986. Why did I mix it up from 1988? Oh, I gotta go through the beta tapes again. Merry Christmas! That must have been recorded for me. What's this? I screamed and blocked the door. Just the facts on the next. I think we're up to 1990. There's something weird at the order. I find that the Nissan standard yeah, has more horsepower, more standard features. It costs less. Really, it's a great car at a great price. So I changed my mind. So sue me. Take the Nissan Stanza challenge now. For thoughts of long. Oh, Star Trek. Yeah, this is definitely 1990, this beta tape. I got this off for. I just thought there was more on here. Actually, there is. I'm missing some stuff. Oh, man, no way. On WPTT TV, Pittsburgh's 22. Oh, wow. Right now, you can be in a new Integra for only $12,245. Come drive an outstanding Acura Integra now at your nearest Western Pennsylvania Acura dealer. If you drive an Acura, you'll buy an Acura. Now's the time, Pittsburgh. Now's the time. This is where the legend began. TV problems when this was recorded in 1991. I think this was weird science here. Oh, perfect. Another match. I know what this was about. One time I came up with a kind of an extreme reaction. I figured they would probably want to burn the place down at some point. And that led to an episode called War of Nerves, which is really a study of their frustration here and uh, um, and psychiatry Sidney Friedman's attempt to help them through that and their own attempt to help them through it by uh, actually uh, coming close to burning a place down. They build this uh, terrific bonfire at the end. The show is called War of Nerves. Will this take a long time? on one other tape once. Oh. Oh. There must be something around here we can use. Whoa. Well, anyhow, there it is, demonstration of, see, that's my camera doing all that, of the 1979 Sears television after being fully cleaned up and picture grayscale redone. Thanks for watching. For reference, here is the 1976 Sears. That's the label that's supposed to be there. It too has the headphone jack on the side. 12 channel selection, capacitance touch. Reactor diode tuning, same exact controls. I also got the adjusting cap for this one. This also has one button color. Um, that one used um, orange neon lamps. This one has red LEDs.